Hello, church family. I just want to give you a word of encouragement today and just to challenge you in these times as we are still facing uncertain times, as we're hearing reports of coming back together. But I've thought a lot over the last few weeks of how busy our lives were and how even in our family, we'd have school activities and church activities and family get-togethers and how that all came to just a screeching halt all of the sudden. And so I just want to challenge you just to be still. That scripture in Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I think we've all experience what being still means and having to just rely on God. I, As I thought about that, be still. We need to be listening to God. I hope you're listening to God. I know I've he's shown me a lot over these last few weeks. Just listening to him, just abiding in him. And I, I also... Um, as we look at being still, I think back to God's revelation to Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19. God sent a great wind, but the Lord wasn't in it. He sent a great earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in it. He sent a great fire, but the Lord wasn't in that fire. But here's what he did. He sent a still small voice and that's where when Elijah heard the Lord I think for many of us God is sending us a still small voice and that still small voice is in a slowdown it's in a time of just pulling back getting rid of the busyness so that we can focus on him. The challenge to us is what are we doing with that time? That time that we have just slowing down, are we being still? It says, be still and know that I'm God. No, are we in our the word of God? Are we wanting to learn more about who God is? And then it closes with, I am God, remembering who God is and that he is still in control. I be still and know that I am God. We must listen, we must learn, and we must remember that God is in control. You know, so many plans have changed and so many plans are still being changed. And the future is still very much unknown. Um, we, I know lots of people, churches, businesses, the government, are trying to prepare for what that future is, but nobody even knows what that future is. The new key phrase that we've all heard is the new norm. I think we were, we're all kind of getting tired of that phrase because that new norm is gonna be different than what the old norm was. And so just during this time, we've got to be still. Know that God is in control. I've thought many times about all of the things that were, all the things that could have been. I think about the church services that we're missing, the, the hugs, the fellowship, the Easter celebrations that were changed the get-togethers with family that didn't happen, going to eat with friends, something that we have taken for granted that has been stripped away from us, not even being able to run an errand when we want to because either the place is closed or we don't want to get out and risk ourselves or risk others and so our new norm 
right now is different one than what the new norm will be in a few weeks. And then the new norm in a few weeks will be different than the new norm in a few months. And I think through all of those traditions and those things that we have become accustomed to, and those things have become different. And, you know, change can often be a good thing. Change can be something that we fear. Change can be something that we push back from. But I know that in the coming days, in the weeks and the months ahead, change is going to be big. Change will be big in our government Change will be big in our state, in the businesses, in the restaurants. Change will be big in our churches. But here's what I want to challenge us to, is that no matter what that change is, be ready, be prepared. It may not be what we want. It may not be what we like or prefer. But seek God and ask him, how is this change gonna affect me? How am I going to allow this change to affect my attitude, my outlook on things? I think so many times we just put our guard up and say, that change is not for me, it's bad, and I don't want to be a part of it. But there's going to be so much change. We need to prepare now by listening, by learning, and by remembering that He is God. He's in control. And I've said this every week. This doesn't come by a surprise to God. He is in control. And I hold on to that. I look forward to that day where we can gather together. But you know what? I celebrate the times that we are gathering together, whether it's on Facebook or on Zoom or uh, on a phone call or on a text or an email. We are gathering together. And as the, si the, the sign says behind me, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. He's not gone away. We are gathering together even though we're separate. And I think that's been something that I've really clung to. We are still together even though we're separate. So there'll be coming, there's coming a day when we will be back together physically. It may be different. There may be changes. But God, as long as we are gathering in his name, he will be worshiped. He will be praised. He will be exalted. And he will be lifted on high. So I want each one of us to prepare our hearts now for that time when we are back together, gathering together, we're gathering separate now, but there's a day coming when we'll gather together. I'm so ready for that day. And I don't know what that day is gonna look like, when that day is gonna happen. And I don't know how we will be back together, but one day we will be back together. I look forward to that day when I can see each one of you face to face. And we may not even be able to give a hug at that point, but just seeing that smiling face, seeing that face, familiar face, will be an encouraging time for each one of us. There may be tears shed, there may be um, so many emotions that we can't even imagine but 
being together is what the body of Christ is made for. Thank you, church, for your encouragement. Thank you for the way I am hearing about reports of people reaching out to others that they wouldn't normally even reach out to on a regular basis. Maybe they see them in passing at church, but they don't um, actually get to visit. And I've heard so many people say, I got to visit with so-and-so. Wow, that was fun. I wish I had more time on a regular basis to get to know that person. I think we're all going to change the way we view people. And I hope that each one of us will uh, look outside of our circle, outside of our box, and see people in a different way. Continue reaching out to those in our community, those in our church. Continue to be praying for that day when God brings us back together. I love you, and I'm so thankful that God sent me to Regency Park for such a time as this.